Hi, I'm Dave Eicher, editor of Astronomy Magazine, and I'm excited to tell you that we have a new video series starring the one and only Abigail Bolenbach. Uh, she is an incredible science communicator, very accomplished uh, young lady, and we're going to get to know her, meet her, and get to know her today a little bit. Abby, it's good to have you in the fold. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you, David? Thank you so much. I so appreciate all the wonderful praises. I'm doing well, and we're excited about infinity and beyond. So let's learn a little about what we're going to do here. Tell us a little bit first, Abby, about your background. So uh, I was a complete uh, ballerina, girly girl, um, all the way since I could ever re remember even. Uh, so I started dancing whenever I was about four. And uh, no one could stop me, no matter what it was I wanted to do. I, I went from ballet to piano. I wanted to do dinosaurs after that. I wanted to go into paleontology. I thought that was my drive. And then, uh, then I discovered astronomy at a very young age. And so I, I was hooked on that. But I, I'm still doing uh, piano. I, I've done competitions and performances throughout my entire childhood up until about a couple months ago we were supposed to have my last competition, my senior competition, but it was canceled because of COVID, however. So uh, I'm just very interested in anything that's art related that I can get my hands dirty and look up in the sky at the same time, so. And how did you originally get interested in viewing the night sky? So how the seedling of interest that I have for astronomy was planted and kind of grew um, came from one singular image. It was the 10,000 galaxy deep field image that Hubble took. And I saw it in uh, my National Geographic magazines for kids. It was just waiting for me to open it on my front porch step. And as soon as I saw that image and fully processed what it was I was seeing, I was instantly hooked. It was just, it was this resolution I felt that I just I had to do it I had to proceed in anything space related and anything I, that could get me closer to that and thus blossom my love for astronomy. Hubble is a great starting point and we're really as you know in a golden age of astronomy astronomical yeah. discoveries now what is it uh, what 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 do you think about this exciting time where we have more research in astronomy and planetary science going on than ever before? I think this is one of the best times to be alive, honestly, in so many different realms, but especially with science and especially being a girl, because everything is so accessible and everyone's so open and willing to help you out. And I've met so many amazing people and have gotten just absolutely uh, I feel so blessed meeting just some awesome people and having amazing opportunities. But with with space and our discoveries, period, it's just phenomenal. Really, this guy is the limit, and it's really not even limiting us at this point. Our only limitation right now is getting off this rock and <laughs> living someplace else. That's our, our main uh, hurdle right now. But I just, ah, uh, I the different areas that I want to pursue, I, I don't even – I don't even know going into college where I want to start. I'm just going to kind of try to have a large swath and just say astronomy, astrophysics, just because, I mean, there's just so many different opportunities to, you know, limit yourself right now would just be foolish just because we're thriving in basically all areas of science, let alone astronomy. And you plan then, do you, on an astronomical career? Yeah, I do, actually. Um my passion is mainly astronomy um, and anything really cosmology. Uh, so I don't think I want to pursue piano uh, as a career. It's just kind of where I let my mind float freely and I can kind of just drift off into my own little happy world. But uh, I do plan on studying astronomy in college. Uh, my goal after obtaining a higher education is to work at some prestigious uh, place like uh, an opportunity being employed at NASA or the European Space Agency or SpaceX or any place that you know wants me I am I'm there but my like I said earlier my options for these fields are almost limitless because there are just so many space related companies pushing the envelope today it's incredible it's a very exciting time and tell me 
What uh, tips would you have for young stargazers who want to get into this field, into this hobby now? Uh, I would just have to say that you need to just put yourself out there. The key is to volunteer over and over and over again, no matter how vulnerable or foolish you feel. That's, that's how I got to the place where I am today. I went to a star party in like 2015 where my uh, Bartlesville Astronaut Book Club was hosting and I was like, oh, can I carry your equipment? And those same people helped me and helped coddle that little flame that happened and it just ignited and over time with other positive feedback and me just continuing putting myself out there and learning and understanding that it's okay to be wrong it's okay to get in front of people and expand your own horizons and learn from them they can learn from you they can you know grab that joy again as well but just ah don't give up never give up. It's, it's going to happen. I had so many lows and so many down points, but there's been many, many more highs that have outweighed anything I could have ever imagined. Terrific. Well, thanks, Abby. We're all looking forward to infinity and beyond, which starts this week here with Astronomy Magazine. And I'm sure it'll be terrific and a lot of fun and you'll be great with it. You'll be Thank talking you. about all kinds of astronomical subjects. You won't believe the subjects. So keep your eyes peeled from Astronomy Magazine and Abby for infinity and beyond. And we'll see out there. We won't even make it count the 10,000 galaxies in the deep field photo. Thanks, Abby. We'll see Thank you soon. Thank you so much, David. Take care.